Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kim Barrett Show. I'm your host, Kim Barrett. And today we are joined by one of my very early mentors, uh, amazing gentleman, uh, great friend, Mr. Gulliver Giles. So he's on here today to talk about how can you dominate in your sales. We actually uh, did an event together and I went to one of his events, I should say, and generated over $600,000 of sales in a week. Uh, it was not easy. <laughs> Let me tell you that. There was a lot of uh, trials, tribulations, and hurdles, which we dive, dive into in this episode. But as I said, uh, Galvo is an uh, epic, epic human, uh, amazing in the world of sales, and uh, as is his uh, lovely wife, Leela Cosgrove, who's amazing as well. Uh, today, we've got Mr. Galvo joining us. Until then, let's jump into the show. Mr. Gulliver, sir, thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate you making the time. Oh, mate, thank you so much for the the glowing introduction. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not sure I feel like I deserve it. <laughs> Good to be here, mate. Good to be here. Like you've you, you've done you've done so many cool things. Um, it's good to catch up again. Seems like it's been too long. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. And uh, I always like to ask at the beginning of uh, every podcast as well. If I met you at a party, we hadn't met before, we didn't already know each other. And I said to you, what is it that you actually do? What's your go-to response? Well, I mean, I, I, I hate talking about myself at networking and parties. So, look, I, my strategy would always be to try and figure out what your problem is and if I could help you solve that and then reposition that around what I do. <laughs> it's, 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 it's people suck at networking because they talk about what they do, right? But um, I, at networking events, I will say, well, look, you know, it depends, you know, what, what is it your business is about? Okay, so for in your business, for instance, here's what we do. But to be honest and just really upfront about it, these days um, I go into companies and I look at where sales aren't happening and why. So at the higher level, I'll do that for, you know, big companies who are having cultural issues with their teams. And I'll go in there and I'll figure out whether they're reparable or whether they need to be managed out. Um uh, then I'll install new team. So I'll kind of do sales management as a done for you service. Um, at the mid range, I just install new teams. Um, and I also, of course, you know, do a lot of executive coaching for companies who, you know, want to establish a good solid sales process and, you know, have all of their metrics tracked and have all of their scripting and their, um, you know, their objection handling nailed down so they can have a multi, multi million dollar sales process and then. Once that's established, we can then put appointment setters and salespeople in place in order to take the load off them. So in most of my work over the last sort of 20 years has been doing work with, you know, companies like yourself where there's a CEO and they, you know, they want to get good at overcoming their stuff around sales and their fear around sales or their nervousness around sales and then helping them then scale and remove themselves from being the only person who can do sales, which you've done successfully. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, obviously recruiting, training, managing, hiring, firing, and putting in place sales management and sales direction so that the, the, the CEO, the Kim Barrett in the company is able to just kick back and sign the checks and not have to be as involved in the front end of the sales process. Because I think that's the difference between having a, you know, a business that you pay your time, which is essentially self-employment and a business where you, um, you know, the business pays you money, whether you are there or not, is having people that can create the wealth, create the growth, create the the leverage for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's a big that's a big kind of description. <laughs> but um, but that's that's we do we do a lot of things. We've been around for a while now, so we have a lot of different offerings depending on where people are at. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I know, yeah, when we very first met, which was in uh, Tokyo, uh, <laughs> and um, I remember I was like still pretty early on in my business at that stage and it was doing a bit of speaking and I was over there to do some uh Facebook ad stuff and, and chat about some different stuff from a marketing perspective and you uh yourself and, and Leah they came on and talked about sales and I was just like man I need I need some help from these guys because it's like marketing and whatnot I found relatively easy but the sa- understanding how to have effective conversations in sales and also like how to be how to be confident because when people would give me campaigns I was, like, oh, I was confident I could do a good job but actually yeah. being confident in conveying that on the phone was like a very different experience for me at the very beginning 
Yeah, for sure. I, and I think a lot of people feel that, you know, they go through that sort of first few six figures of just like, you know, you're basically pulling it out of your ass and hoping stuff works um, until you invest the time and the money to really be able to kind of create a a system that, you know, well, if I say these things in this order, I convert at least this much out of these many calls. And at that point, you know, you've got something where you you can give that to somebody else and, and they will they will be able to achieve the success if they do what you ask them to do. Um, and I think that's the real difference. Like when, when, when we met you, you were, you know, you're one of those rare people that actually goes and does stuff. Um, and it made that whole trip to Tokyo was bizarre because it was like these dudes that we knew were like, Hey, we're doing a summit. Would you like to come and speak? And we were like, yes. And they were shocked that we said yes, because people, people are like, Oh, it's too far. It's Tokyo. It's like, we will go anywhere. And take any opportunity to travel, to have fun, to meet people, to make sales, to build relationships. And you really stood out in that room because you were one of those people, you know, out of all the people in the room, there were very few people from from America or from Australia or from England. And there were a lot of people from Asia and a lot of people from Japan particularly. But for, for us to meet you at that, it told us immediately that you were someone who was going to go after it because you would go and do stuff. And the whole trip to Tokyo was worthwhile just I mean, we made a bunch of sales that event, but meeting you was like the biggest part of it because we've done so much with each other since then and, you know, able to create some really good outcomes for your clients and in the world, help people get a better result. So, yeah, it was a super, super cool way to meet you um, and to you could identify, well, this is Kim and Kim is someone who's going to make a name for himself. You could just tell. You could just tell. <laughs> It was fun. And obviously that was the, like the, one of the precursors to then we, um, obviously did a, a lot of work together, trained up like pretty much every single one of my sales team ever have always gone yeah. on and done, done work with you guys. And then we went in, uh, people still like freak out when I tell them the story of when we went and did, um, residential where we were like locked away <laughs> for, the, for nine days and like yeah. we told them the outcome. I was like, yeah, we did the you know, over 600 K in sales. Um, mm. But the, I mean, the, the precursor to that is a story I always like to tell is like how scared I was to actually like do it at the time when you're like, cool, do it. And then I was like, oh, this is like a big investment for me, right? Probably that was the time, the biggest investment I put into myself and my business. Yeah. I was like, oh, like I didn't have the cash either at the time. And I was like, can we do a payment plan? You're like, you've got three weeks. You can pay me each week for three weeks. If you can do that, you can do it. And I was like... Okay. So I was like, as soon as I committed, I was like, well, I have to, now I have to go and figure out how I'm going to do it uh, <laughs> and freak myself out. It worked real hard, but uh, we did it in the end. And then obviously it, it paid off in the long run, but it was a, um, it was, it was a big leap for me making that, you know, 30 K investment to go and do this, but obviously to do that and then figure out the process of, you know, doing, I think that week was nearly 60 hours of dialing, 60 hours of calls yeah. in one yeah. week. And that was like, but I, I feel like, I feel like, you know, like, like when you first joined us, you know, like to invest, I think you were doing a few hundred thousand dollars at that point, but you weren't the millions. Right. And to invest $30,000 in mentoring is a big step. And I feel, I feel that because like every single time that we've invested big money, like I don't remember the first time that we spent money with Frank Kern, we spent like 15 grand with him and I had a fucking tantrum at Leela about where we we're going to find the money. And it was the stupidest thing, you know, because I should have distrusted her because she's always right, you know, and we did it and we made literally millions of dollars from what we learned. But you never know that at the start, you kind of have to just suspend your disbelief and stop being a little bitch and actually fucking do the work. And every single course we've, uh, last, the last coaching we bought was $160,000. And I like to think after 20 years in the industry and, you know, decade previous to that doing sales and sales management that I know a bit about sales, but I still hire sales consultants. You know, I still hire companies that, 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 you know, are doing things I'm not to learn. And it, it, you know, $20,000 a month over six months, whatever it ended up being like, it just fucking it was scary as fuck. It doesn't stop being scary because growth is always scary, but people... People think that they're going to like, you know, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to invest in the mentoring when they're already successful. But what you actually have to do is invest in the mentoring and make yourself successful. And that's something that you did that most people don't do. Um, Leela talks about this all the time. You know, she's like, I 
commit to doing the thing and then have a freak out about how I'm going to make it happen. Most people have a freak out and never commit to doing the thing. Mm. And that's the difference between you and the millionaires and the people who stay their whole lives living a life of quiet desperation is you do it even though you have no idea how you're going to make the money, you commit to doing it and then it happens. And you did that. And I'm like, and I remember you came to an event very early in the system um, where you know, you were doing, I think, a lot of done for you, digital marketing, Facebook advertising stuff at that point, but you really wanted to establish yourself as a brand. And we talked about, you know, what do you care about? And you're like, I love martial arts and I love marketing and I love travel. And I'm like, what if you did a, a retreat where you did martial arts and marketing and travel? Which is kind of, you know, based around that sort of residential idea, that immersion idea of like, take them somewhere, get them out of their comfort zone, make them do shit. And you did that dojo for 20 grand or whatever it was in Thailand and you took them to the martial arts gyms like you were always innovating and coming up with shit and just committing to it and doing it and that's the difference between you and a lot of students who just get a mediocre result or no result at all is you would commit to doing the thing figure it out make it happen you know so I feel like that's kind of like the big lesson you know w when it comes to um, sales is, you know, pushing yourself to do the things, to go to a higher level, to push yourself out of your comfort zone, create innovative, cool shit that excites you and terrifies you to do it. And that's a big reason why we've been successful and why we've established ourselves as a big reason why you've been successful and why you've established yourself and you've moved from being a done for you service to being a known brand mastermind mentor because you went out there and you, and you got it. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And it's, uh, I've seen it happen so many times and I, I i think i did a post about it yesterday as well and it's like the only by putting yourself into those situations are where you're going to be able to yeah see what you're made of push yourself out of your comfort zone and it's not like i mean probably a little bit of that when we went and did that my event in thailand where we're, we're doing martial arts training on top of a cliff with like a mr miyagi type guy and yeah, stuff like where we're that pushing ourselves awesome. a bit physically but most of the time it's the it's the mental thing. And for me, I remember even even going to residential, um, I had a, I was catching a taxi from the airport and in my stomach I was like, cool, I was feeling so like nervous and sick and I was like, oh, like I don't know what's going to happen. And I was like, look, I'm not like bloody trying to be like a David Goggins and go and run 10,000 kilometers and my feet are going to start bleeding. I've just got to go in a house with some pretty epic people, learn some stuff and pick up the phone and call people. Like it's it's in the in the big scheme of things it's it's hard but obviously we can really easily get in our heads about how overly complex you know sales is going to be. And I remember, I think it was earlier in that year before we went to that. I think it was yourself and you said to me, "It's like, man, if you have pipeline, you don't really mind. Like you can go through and you, as long as you've got consistent conversations that you're able to have, it's like you can solve almost any any problem with that." And yeah, I've passed it on to my um, clients and, and uh, people so often is that if you're worried about the outcome of any one sale, it's like we just don't have enough people to talk to. If we mm. flip that on its head and you have too many, then it's like, well, it's easy to be uh, confident, it's easy to be able to have a deeper conversation and also call people out uh, on, on things. If they're saying one thing and you're like, that doesn't sound right. But if you're sitting there going, mm. I have two leads and this is one of two of them that I'm speaking to right now, I can get pretty uh, pretty hairy and you're like, like want to don't yeah. mess up. Yeah. I think like, like w having the intestinal fortitude, the guts, the determination when you have two leads is what leads to you having that as a default state when you have a hundred leads, you know, like you, you don't get to having hundreds and hundreds of leads because, you know, because you didn't make sales and make money. Yeah. Like you, you, you have to start, like when we first started, there was no Facebook ads. There was like the yellow pages and going to other people's events and networking and we had like 200 leads on the database in the first year I converted like 25 of them into something and then the rest wouldn't pick up their phones and it was pretty crunchy there um you had to sell my guitar to buy milk at one point like you know I, I think everyone goes through that but you're right there's no there's no problem you can't solve with sales and there's always more pipeline there's always a JV there's always a referral network there's always something you know, a successful ad campaign around the corner, but you, you know, like those that don't give up, those that don't quit, they're the ones who grind through and win. And I think this is like, when I look at what you did, you were always looking for a way to make it happen. You were leaning in and looking for a way to make it happen. When most people are leaning out and looking for an excuse not to do the thing, you know, when you came to residential, 
I think, you know, $660,000 in contract value and like whatever it was in cash that you took home that week. Most people don't have the guts to do that. Um, but some people, the rare person who's successful backs themselves into a corner and finds a way to make it happen. And that's what you've done consistently. That's what everybody I know who's actually ever actually been successful does, right? So like when I saw you at residential, what I really noticed, and there's lots of different ways to make money at residential. We've had people make a million dollars at residential. We've had people make 600,000 like yourself, the average, you know, a hundred, 200,000, 300,000 dollars, you know, is where most people end up. Um, so sitting down for nine days in a group paying $30,000 to do something like that is scary as shit, but the people that do the work get that money back in their pocket and they get an experience and an intensity that they could never get anywhere else. Why do we do it like that? Even though it's so intimidating is because, well, you're a martial artist, right? Like you get in the ring with someone, you are going to get kicked in the guts. You are going to get punched in the face. You are going to... You know, you're going to get a chipped tooth. You're going to break your hand. You're going to find it's difficult. <laughs> it's definitely going to be some problems. Um, but if you're worried about how that's going to go down, then you'll never get in the ring. Um, when when I, when I get in the ring with my my mentor, it was like, I'm going to try and hit this guy. I can never manage it, but I'm going to give it everything I've got. And only then did I actually start learning things. Um, because it was like I, I wasn't looking for a way to to escape from him. I was looking for a way to lean into the fight. So I think there's a lot of parallels there in what you did at residential because you, you were leaning in. It might have been frightening for you, but you had a strategy. Like um, you, you sort of, you went into that and you might not have been the loudest person in the room. You might not have been the most extroverted person in the room, but you were the most disciplined and consistent. And one thing I really noticed about you at that at that event was you never weren't pitching you were like just i think you double booked every single appointment slot for the entire week and just stacked up the work and went right i'm gonna i'm just gonna be on the phone this entire week and everybody else eventually like you left them in the dust because you were the one doing the consistent work and just showing up and doing it even though it's scary even though it's exhausting um that's where the, the money always is the end of all of that hard work that most people aren't putting in <laughs> that's it and like yeah. for, for context for people if they haven't heard this story before it's like uh, the because we were in melbourne so obviously being in perth i was like we, that perth is like um uh, obviously all, always behind so it's like i could call people later and then i also would have earlier appointments being the the um the uh the east coast as well so i think it was like pretty much like seven till seven i think every like and we had like a little bit of lunch break but then i was like seven o'clock i was like cool that time I was like, we, we didn't leave the house. I was like, wake up, shower, coffee. I was like, what else am I going to do? I'm here to, here to learn. So I was like, all right, That's it. straight, yeah. on, straight onto, onto the sales calls. Um, and that was, yeah, 12 hours a day for five days, and obviously a few days of like prep and, and then kind of um, uh, re reflection as well. But that was, yeah, it was the, the most intense, but I learned so much. Even after day one, I had done, that was, yeah, 12 hours of calls. Whereas some people mm. might do 12 hours of calls across like two weeks. Uh, a month. Yeah. yeah. So that was just the intensity. And I was like, well, if, I'm, if I've got to be here, I've at least got to be be filled up. And it's like, worst case at the end of that, if I do 60 hours and I made no no sales, by the end of it, uh, well, I would have to like fall over a sale. I was like, I'm going to fall over a sale even if I, yeah, even if I, uh, if I suck terribly. But by that point in being able to have yourself come in and give feedback Leela come in and just be like hey why did you say that why didn't like how did this happen and i'm like oh like you know and um there were points where we got like immediate feedback being like hey like listen to me while you're talking to this person feedback immediately and then yeah. like you know posthumous where it's like cool oh, on this you said this and then that happened and you see how this would have been a better flow from there and like, oh well like all these things that if you're sitting in an office by yourself or if you're someone who has a business, it's like you don't really get the opportunity to reflect on that from a like ex external person and, and show you those things. Um, and I remember after I did it, I was like, "Cool, there's um, you know, any time I could have an opportunity to send us my sales team to learn from you guys, it's like because I do my best to try and instill a little bit of that. But again, I'm already doing other stuff in my business every day. It's not like I have those days blocked out just to sit and yeah, and the freighters are different now. <laughs> 
that's the benefit I found from all of my team always. Whenever they've gone across, they've and um, to learn from you guys, they've been like, wow, like you know, Gulliver heard this and told me this, or heard this and gave me this, and it's like it's just always been um, such a such a change in the in the state of people because you don't know what habits you fall into, you don't know you know, just some of the things that you might say that like, you're like, oh no, I'm definitely following my script. And it's like, oh, hang on. Like you went on this whole tangent over here and you started getting stuck over there. Like that's, that's not sticking to the script. Yeah, that's it. And I think, I think like, you know, the reason that we created these events was because when we began, there was no Facebook ads. There was no cheaply available lead gen. There was just, you know, you had to work really hard to get a lead. And you did not want to screw it. So you need to know exactly what you're going to say, what breakthroughs you're going to give them, what insights you're going to give them, how you're going to call them to action, how you're going to handle those objections. And I think a lot of people like when they start out in sales, they they, they need a script because they don't know what they're doing. And there's this dangerous place where they get good at what they're doing and they abandon that stuff and they just kind of ad lib it and they don't get the same results. The, the Really the masters, people like you, they wouldn't go into battle without their sword. They wouldn't get in a sales call without their their approach nailed down because you don't want to have to be thinking about what you're going to say next. You want to be able to be thinking about seven steps ahead of where you are, how you're going to handle the problem this guy just told you he's going to bring up later in the call. So it's what separates the the men from the boys, the wheat from the chaff, the experienced from the inexperienced. Um, you know, you're not an amateur who needs it. You're not a journeyman who's cocky and thinks he doesn't need it. You're a, you know a master who who really has a process and that's the only reason that you've been able to get off the phone and you're not the one who has to do it all yourself anymore and you've got you know other leaders in the, the business who are able to pick up that sword for you is because you crafted it in the first place you know and that's why we built the events that we've built because we'd give people these systems and they wouldn't you know, you know they'd buy the coaching program or whatever and they wouldn't do the work they wouldn't use it and it would frustrate the shit out of me <laughs> and i was like what if we locked them in a house and made them do it for like a couple of days and the results were incredible, which is why we then, you know, we got so much notoriety from, you know, the clients like yourself that got good results or the clients would come to us and go, I want to do what Kim did. How do we do that? You know? So I think um, going to America, you know, training Ryan Dice's sales team using, you know, that first day of strategy and the second day of technique training and the third day of mindset training, I'm sorry, actually execution mindset, like how are you going to do it? Let's listen to your call. Those guys made 75 grand on day three by all getting on the phone and actually having a crack at it. That's what gave birth to the idea of then like, let's do nine days and see what someone could do in nine days, you know? Um, so that's what you got subjected to was like, how do we make sure our clients are actually doing it properly? And cause we really cared. Like it was like, we wanted, like, if we're going to charge you $30,000 for a program you better be fucking making a hundred back. <laughs> if you're going to charge you $30,000 from an event, you better be making $300,000, you know, that week. And you made six, so you kicked everyone's ass. <laughs> but it's about forced implementation. And, and like you said, critical feedback. Like, do you see where you fucked that? Fix it. Do you see where you fucked that? Fix it. Do you see where you failed? Get back up. Try again. Get back up. Like that intensity, like scares the shit out of people. But if you don't go looking for the stress in your business, it will come and find you. If you don't go looking for the stress of how do I get better at sales, th those bills are going to keep coming, you know? hundred percent. And yeah, it's, it's something that I see so often. And as I said, that's why, like I knew I had to get good at sales because it was my, I, I could generate leads. Like that was easy. You know what I mean? Ads, ads is, uh, is something easy in comparison. Yeah. Uh, place. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Being able to, to go through and actually they go, all right, great. Now I've got these people like conversion process like let's get this actually happening was was difficult and the same even for my team is like i know that for them they they were they were good when i was able to give them you know the scripting the process the education from from you guys as well but then when i was able to get them to actually get some live implementation of it like it's it's always there i always you know like to as as you say like sharpening the sword it's like mm. well they were just so much sharper when they were actually able to implement it with someone who give them feedback, which is why I really yeah. sending him over to you know sales dominance stuff like that was always yes pertinent to their growth because you can get as you said you, if you if you're implementing things where you've learned in a program and whatnot and you're reading a script it's like it's good but the live feedback and implementation and actually instilling that into someone because again as I say even making even instilling the the process of using your script and following it yeah. 
But everyone always says to me, like, oh, but how did, like, Gulliver sell you? I'm like, same, like, the same script. Like, it's not like it doesn't mean different because I know him was with our second or fifth or a hundredth conversation. The process mm-hmm. is the same because it's the process. Yep, that's it. So I think, like, you know, like, you learn a lot more going to Thailand and training, you know, Mr. Miyagi on the mountaintop than you're going to learn reading a book about what Muay Thai is like. Yeah, like you, you can you can watch Muay Thai on the, the internet and you can practice at home, but having someone there who's been doing it for thirty years look over your shoulder and say, "Kim, move your you move your hips slightly here. Can you feel my, the power there? Okay, now kick him. Oh wow. Okay, look, he flew across the room. <laughs> like those little adjustments, right? Like like that's the the mastery level, the little two millimeter adjustments that separate you know, okay performance from absolute dominance. I mean, that's what, you know, sales dominance and the sales residential are all about. And that's what all of our training, whether we come into your corporation and, you know, train you a new team or whether you're an entrepreneur who's a solopreneur who needs to learn how to make an extra few hundred thousand dollars a year to get to the million dollars. It's all around those principles of like, well, you know, how do we get your head right? How do we get your approach right? How do we get your execution right? You know, those things don't change. And I think you're seeing in this this current generation of people who've come up in the last few years, you know, there's been a time where for five or 10 years, there's been just leads easily. You know, you you could learn how to spend $200 a week and get a hundred leads and close sales every week. And that hasn't been available at any time in human history until just recently. And you've seen unparalleled financial growth in the markets where everything's been going really, really, really well right up until COVID and in the last couple of years things have been getting tighter and tighter and the world is changing and it's more difficult to get a result from advertising and it's more difficult to get a result just by sitting there waiting for people to to give you money on the internet and I think we're seeing a time now where those sales disciplines and those you know those skills and that tenacity and that drive if you're looking to be in business in 2024 and 2025 what you may have noticed is the world is getting harder yeah interest rates are going up inflation's going up there's some terrible shit going on in the world these are hard times what 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 you need to be to survive those hard times is you need to be harder you need to be tougher you need to be stronger you need to actually take a a mastery approach to selling and and having a sales system like what kim has done you need to do too um because that's where the actual freedom is in taking responsibility yeah that's taking ownership of a right well I'm not good at this. I'm frightened of it. I need to fix it. I need to get better. Guys, we've got to wrap it up there. There's so much knowledge, sales bombs in this that we are going to have to go into two episodes. So I hope you like. And if you want to find out more about the events that Gulliver and Leela run, check out the links down below. We've got some free resources, upcoming events, a range of cool stuff for you guys that you can take advantage of. And we'll see you on episode number two next week.